Hey Rugget, when did your somethings not right here gut feeling ever save you? Last year, the 1st of December, I had slept for almost a week trying to fight what I thought was the flu. Woke up and that exact gut feeling kept on telling me something's not right with me. Called the parents to tell them and then cabbed myself to the emergency room. Took blood, the whole 9 yards, was there for 8 hours. Discharged and sent home. Called the next morning asking me to come back because they found something in my blood. Bacteremia and endocarditis. I was put on penicillin immediately, for 2 months, more tests, more things wrong, went for a specialized test on the 21st of December, woke up to them telling me I need surgery as soon as possible, they are trying to find a surgical team, earliest is the 24th, I go in and while they're operating I have an ascending aortic aneurysm and it caused an aortic dissection, they're able to fix it, I've got a synthetic valve in there now, here's the kicker. I work in a restaurant kitchen, just before the start of the holiday season. Normally most cooks would tough it out and just work. Most think, it happens and it'll get better soon. Just keep going. There was just something about the way I was feeling this time that made me go to the hospital. I'm told that if I had done that, I more than likely would have died before my birthday and they would have found out about the aneurysm during the autopsy. That still sends freaking chills down my spine. My best friend works as an emergency room nurse at the same hospital that I was operated on and she was freaking out internally but kept it together on the outside for me. She explained just how serious this all was after I was in recovery. I've promised to tell her whenever I get that same feeling again. TL. DR. Gut told me to go to the hospital. If I hadn't I would have been dead 3 weeks later. Cheers. Edit. I've got to get to work now but I'll try to answer more replies during the day. Please keep them coming so others can learn from my mistaken fortunes. Thank you. Edit 2. Thank you kind stranger for the silver. I still don't know what to do with it but I wish one back to you. Edit 3. WFT. 6k upvotes on a post that I made about my heart. Thank you all for all the concern and wishes. Seeing the conversation this has produced has helped a lot with just my general well-being and mental health. Truly moved by this. I was walking out of a grocery store when I saw this kid about to cross the road. Something came over me and I yanked him back onto the sidewalk. Not even a second later a truck came flying past. He was probably around 7 or 8-ish. There's a very fun road that gets you from Niederndorf to Vach, or back. In Germany, you can go 60 or 70 clicks kph along smooth tight turns and little rolling hills. All around it for acres and acres are fields of whatever's in season and no intersections for several kilometers. It's a very fun road to go too fast on. This day, something like wheat was in and it was high. I couldn't see around the corners, but I knew the road well and was staying in my lane. And I was going fast, and smiling. About halfway in, I heard a voice in my head as clear as if the speaker was sitting next to me and it said, you need to slow down. It was startling and I braked immediately. Two seconds later I come through one of the turns and into the butt end of a combine taking up both lanes and moving slowly. I barely stopped in time. Those extra two seconds of brake time saved a Volvo at least, but I'm pretty sure they saved my life too. Edit. Click clarity. If it was an old Volvo, it would have survived and you wouldn't have. If it was a newer Volvo, you would have survived and the Volvo wouldn't have. Once I was at the bank doing business with the ATM, I noticed a black and yellow van parked with a man in the driver's seat. The van was off, and he was just sitting there. Made me uncomfortable, so I didn't want to go home. Instead, I got in my car and moved to the other side of the parking lot near a hardware store and outdoor recycling center. It was broad daylight. I just sat in my car pretending to read, and the van started up and moved down to my side of the parking lot. Again, he reversed the van into a parking spot that was facing my car. Now I knew that I shouldn't go home, which was nearby. So instead, I got out and went to visit the two men who were manning the recycling center. I asked if I could sit on their extra chair because the van guy was making me uncomfortable. They said sure, and since business was slow, we got to chatting. I asked them how they liked the work and how business had been. The van guy finally started up his van and left. After I took a picture of it and texted the info to my husband. After another 10 minutes with the guys, I took a circuitous route home to make sure the van wasn't anywhere around. 
The kicker is this, I asked the guys how long they'd been working at the recycling station, and they said about 4 months. I'm like, oh, what did you do before this? And they both go, oh, we were in prison before. Well, whatevers. They still saved me. Prison dudes are always bad people. Sometimes they're just in a bad place. One thing for sure is that sex offenders are at high risk of receiving jail yard justice. I went out with my best friend on New Year's last year and were having drinks with her friends when I realized I was out of cigarettes. I left for a few minutes to walk over and grab a pack and ended up talking to a homeless guy for a while. And when I went over to the entrance of the bar she was outside and said something mean to me for no reason and walked off. I was confused so I decided it would be good if I took a walk to let her cool off and then figure out what she was upset about. I was going to walk down the street for a bit but something told me to turn left, walking behind the bar and then turning to the side of the bar when I see a girl laying down on the sidewalk and people walking by her. As I'm walking over to help I realize it's my friend and she's not very conscious. She was probably drugged while I was getting smokes and who knows what would have happened if I hadn't decided to go that way. Scares the crap out of me. Wow wow wow. This is such a fear of mine. I live in Vegas and there's a ton of people that drug other people's drinks. So glad it was you that found her. I was with a co-worker. He had lied to me about going to a family party of his. But when I showed up, it was just him and I and we went to a bar. I rolled my eyes and just thought I could clench my teeth through it. He knew the owner of the bar, and got me alcoholic drinks. I was only 20. I started pouring out the drinks when the dude was shooting pool because I didn't want to be tipsy drunk while dealing with him. That decision honestly saved me. I told him I wanted to go home, but he talked me into taking him home first. So I followed the directions he gave me and I pulled into a hooker bar parking lot instead. He started getting really aggressive and trying to kiss me. I kept pushing him off. I was still trying to be polite but firm and telling him to stop. That's when I noticed the group of guys around my car. Talking to my co-worker in my car in another language. He then opened my car door. Got out. And proceeded to grab me by the hair to try to pull me out of my car. The other guys gathering around. I had a mind to lock my door when I noticed the other guys. I also had put my car in reverse. So when he grabbed my hair I let off the brake and my car started rolling back so he let go of me. It was terrifying. I told our boss the next day and he quit when our boss asked him about it. I even drove away with my passenger door wide open. I didn't stop to close it until I was several miles away and even then I was super paranoid. You never have to be polite in that situation. No one is entitled to your politeness, especially after violating so many boundaries. Glad you made it out and sorry you had to go through something that scary. I was walking to the barbershop, and for some reason, everything just felt off. I ignored the feeling but every step I took just made me feel like something wasn't right. So I decided to just go grab some food and come back. While I was eating I saw police cars and ambulances driving to around where I was before. It turns out there was a murder. Now I always listen to my gut feeling. Maybe you smell death. I was offered a dream job at almost double my salary in a different city. It was only 2 hours away, but something told me not to take the job. I had a number of people tell me I would never have another opportunity like this, and my fear of leaving my hometown was holding me back. Two months after I turned it down, that division of the company was sold, and everyone in that department lost their job. I'd have been stuck in a new city with no friends or family nearby, and no job prospects. There were a lot of other details I didn't put in my original response. I'd already been working within this division for 7 years. I was offered two internal positions at the same time with my employer, one with a huge salary bump out of town as a trainer, and one at the same salary in town doing casework in a completely new department. It was either change locations or change departments, so I listened to my gut and chose the lower paying job in a new department and called myself a failure for not taking a risk. Within 4 years of taking the position in town, I was managing the trainers in my new department. In the 11 years I've been in my new department, I've almost tripled my salary. If I'd lost that job in 2008 I'd have lost all the benefits that come with 7 years of employment vacation time, stock options, performance reviews, 401k hassles, contacts, etc. 
I never could have foreseen this turn of events 11 years ago, and lot of it was the dumb luck of being in the right place at the right time, and following my gut. You were obviously supposed to save the division. It didn't save me but I saved someone else. When I was 6 my brother, 8 at the time, and I would go to my grandma's house while our mom worked late some nights. Anyway one day I was just randomly thinking about fire alarms. I don't know what caused me to think about it but after I started I couldn't stop. I have had that and this super focus thing so whenever I'm thinking about something as simple as fire alarms it consumes my mind. I asked my grandma and she said she hadn't tested hers in a while. Just for kicks she did and sure enough the batters were dead. She replaced the batters and made sure they worked. The very next morning her house caught on fire while she was asleep. If she didn't hear the fire alarm she wouldn't have been trapped in her room on the second story without a phone or any way to contact help. She most likely would have died. I always make sure fire detectors alarms work in my house now. Plot twist. The new battery is shorted and caused the fire. Glad she made it out of course. So, it technically didn't save me, it would have. Anyway, a couple months after my 10th birthday we went on family vacation to visit my dad's side of the family. They lived a state away. My mom was about 6 months pregnant with my only baby brother at the time. We got to our hotel at about 2 o'clock and by 3 o'clock we decided we wanted to make the most of the day and go to the aquarium. I got fully dressed and ready to go and suddenly I was hit with this crippling feeling of dread. At that age I'd never experienced anything like it. Pure anxiety. But I knew. I just freaking knew if we waited 5 minutes I would be fine. I tried telling my mom this and she was having none of it. I even tried to just stall her by begging. Nope. Got dragged. Not literally lol. Out of the hotel and into the car. We pull out of the parking lot and get t-boned so hard we do a 180 into oncoming traffic. As soon as we all realized we were okay I was like, ah, yep, there it is. I've never let either of them forget it either lol. If this were my fam they would turn it around on me and say see, the begging you did delayed us so we were right there at the moment we got t-boned. Glad all was okay for you. About 10 years ago, working security at a site about 50 miles from home, got off shift at midnight, and didn't bother to change out of uniform because I was only going to stop for gas. Two stations in the town I was working in were open after midnight, but it slipped my mind as I drove past the first one, pulled into the other, same brand, same gas price, same sort of dump entirely, and just didn't like something about it. Nobody else around but E. Clark that I could see, but I decided to go back to the other one. Topped off and headed back out of town, I get close to that station again. Three city cop cars, two deputies and a state trooper are outside blocking the road with guns drawn. Turns out a city cop walked in on a robbery. Dude put a bullet in his vest, and the store owner knocked the robber out cold with a bat before the cop could recover enough to get his gun out. That would have been me, in a uniform with a nice shiny badge, but no body armor. Whoa, in all earnestness you actually dodged a bullet on that one. I'm afraid of roller coasters, mostly heights but they go hand in hand. My friends and I went to a theme park and went on one that was in darkness and went underground. I rode it once, sitting in the back, and really enjoyed it surprisingly. When we reached the start again, there was no line, as it was the end of the day, so they asked if we wanted a final go before they shut down. Something in my gut told me not to go on so, despite my friends nagging, I didn't and waited with the bags. My friends came back around a few minutes later white as a sheet, about 3 stroke 4 of the way through the ride. There's a big drop then it goes fast and just before that, my friend in the back's bar had risen up. Apparently they had to grip onto her for the rest of the ride whilst trying to push the bar back down. Oh god that's my worst nightmare. Not me, but my mother. Saved my grandfather's life when he had a stroke in his chair in their living room. We had all started to walk around the, the development, when my mother, after about 50-75 meters from the house said, I am going to go back and check on dad. I went with her, and I nearly witnessed my grandfather die. He was on the chair, conscious, but unable to move or talk, just looking at my mother with bulging eyes. She called 911 once, then twice when she felt that they were running late. Ambulance came. 
got him on the stretcher, but it was too wide to fit out the door. We ended up tearing the door frame off to get him out, because he was conscious. He actually remembers the ride to the hospital. He told us later that he heard the driver or someone say, there is not a chance that this guy lives. That was when I was around 5-6 years old. He is still alive to this day, more than a decade later. At my mother's funeral, part of his speech was about how, without my mother's actions, he would not have been able to spend time with her during her final years of life. And for that, he is eternally grateful. I am terribly sorry to hear that your grandfather and yourself had to bury your mother, but you all had a few more years together at least. My aunt told me a story about my dad, who greatly dislikes his sister and is an all around butthole 98% of the time, calling her out of the blue one night while she was in college. She answered. He said he didn't know why but he had this urge to call her, to make sure she was okay. She told him she was fine and thanked him for calling to check on her. She never told anyone else except me, and hopefully a therapist or two, but she was holding the bottle of pills she was planning to commit suicide with right when he called her. 20 some years later and she's very happy with her decision to live. Please check out ways you can help or donate in your community. There is always the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Also good to know. Community services boards often have a mental health department with paid employees working their crisis hotline mental health services line during business hours, and volunteers outside of that, who can work with you to get the help you need. If you, or someone you know, has suicidal thoughts or struggles with substance abuse please check the resources available to you. They can guide you through the process, give you information, help you call in a wellness check, direct you to other community resources such as shelters and safe homes, etc. Five years ago I was one of the employees on the other end of the phone. Not a day goes by that I don't remember the people who were saved by reaching out, as well as the people who I failed to help. If you're struggling and think you'll be a burden to those lifeline workers, please know you'll live in their memories as a success story forever. We draw strength from your strength. Reach out. Get help. This some Jedi stuff. I matched with a guy on Tinder. We exchanged messages. And everything was fine. Normal. We decided we would meet up for coffee in a week. A few days after we arranged the coffee date, he messaged me saying his father had passed away in those few days. He couldn't meet me in public. He could only meet me in private at his apartment. I trusted my gut, sent my condolences, but said I couldn't meet him somewhere private. He tried to tell me I could trust him because he had a dog. I still declined. He got really aggressive and started messaging me horrible things. He called me every name in the book. I ended up blocking him. I tried to find him later on, and he basically never existed. He could have blocked me on all social media, but I couldn't find a trace of him anywhere. I don't know what the outcome would have been, but I just couldn't do it. I was 15 years old and my mom dropped me off at McDonald's to get breakfast while she went across the street to get Starbucks. It was a shopping mall in suburbia and we were on the way to pick up a new kitten a few hours away. Instead of walking the 100 yards to my mom I sat outside waiting for her to pick me up. The teenagers I guess. As I'm standing there a guy in an old station wagon with two kids in the back starts talking to me. He asks me where I'm going and I say whatever town it was. He says he's going there too with his kids and asks if I want to come. I tell him no that my mom is across the street and he comes closer. My gut is saying something is off so I see a random woman walk out of Starbucks and I point to her and say that's my mom right there. He freaked out and left really quick. I still remember those two kids in the back seat. They looked so off. I wonder to this day if they are okay. I did not tell my mom and I don't know why. I think I was scared she would be upset with me and not want to go get a kitten. I was barely 15 and teenagers are selfish buttheads. I finally told her a few years ago and she was super upset about it. I was so freaked out I didn't even think to get a plate. I grew up in suburbia but the rich kind of suburbia where this kind of stuff was never talked about. But I wasn't into true crime so I had no idea what you're supposed to do. If I had the knowledge I have now I obviously would have handled it totally differently. In 2004, on Boxing Day, not me but my mother. Family trip including all cousins and extended family on my dad's side to visit the coastal south of Sri Lanka on vacation. 
about 20 people in all. Well planned trip. Last moment my mother didn't want to go. No reason at all. None of us could get her to explain why but she refused to go. So we went inland on a different trip to see some other relatives. Around midday, the entire extended family now on both sides were sitting shocked in front of the television watching the very same hotel we booked being washed away live by that tsunami. To date, she still can't explain what she felt. Thanks for the gold and silver guys. 3. I was building a fort in the woods near my house as a kid. Got this eerie feeling that something was wrong so I packed my stuff and made my way home. Next day, on my way to school on the bus, my friend mentioned a cougar his family saw running across the road that was within a couple hundred feet of where I was. It just so happened to be at the same time I was out there. I smelled burning plastic early in the morning at my family cottage and almost went back to sleep. I was around 15, but got up to investigate. A socket on the outside of the building had caught fire and flames were shooting up the wall. The rest of my family was still sleeping and there wasn't enough smoke for the alarms to go off. I ran and got the fire extinguisher, got my dad up, and put it in his hands and pointed him towards the fire, stopped it and called the fire department. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.